Hello everybody, my name is Grace Teachow and I am news editor for Western Herald and today I am here with the Cab Fall concert headliner, Kyle. Kyle, how are you today? Hey, I'm good. How are good. you doing? I'm good. I'm very excited to be here. Let's go. So am I, yo. All right. So I'm excited we'll get... to be an honorary Bronco. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we take this serious. Absolutely. <laughs> so the last time you were in Kalamazoo was in 2017. Yeah. So how does it feel back to be like, how does it feel to be back having grown as a musician? You know what? It's it's really wild. It's kind of like a. It kind of shows you how much time can fly by. Absolutely. Because I looked at that uh, Kalamazoo show from 2017. Mm -hmm. I looked at the lineup and I saw Lizzo was on there. Wow. Yeah. And like Smino was on there, and all these people were on there. And I was the headliner, and I was like, wow, that was really a thing, you know? And it kind of it kind of makes you. It just I don't know. It kind of makes you realize that like. 2017 is a totally different world from 2020. Yeah, sometimes it feels like 2017 was yesterday when it was almost almost getting to be 10 years ago. Yeah, so. no, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so how has your life changed since you started making music, both personally and professionally? Well, I started like writing songs and everything when I was like very young, like five or six years mm -hmm. old. And so that's always been a part of my life. And I would say by the time I was like 11... I'm like trying to make it, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like yeah. trying to go to studios. I'm trying to like, my dad was really big on like taking me to studios mm -hmm. and trying to introduce me to his like friends in Hollywood type mm -hmm. thing. And I've always just been on that journey. So I can really only talk about when it started becoming like a professional career. Mm -hmm. And I would say the biggest thing that changed is my involvement in regular life things like mm -hmm. going to school for example yeah. like all of my friends did i never really did that mm -hmm. you know or um watching all your friends get married and all that type of stuff like i never really really did that so i'd say like the there wasn't really a change in my day-to-day mm -hmm. -day activities because it was write a song make a song yep try and get famous write a song mm -hmm. make a song try and get famous from like age 11 to like now but i would say I guess a really big difference was just um, just traveling and being a bunch of other places and kind of missing out on things like going to college or doing yeah. stuff like that. I'm really, I'm just, I'm not privy to that, mm -hmm. which is always such a huge chunk of somebody's life, right? Yeah, a I'm lot of people don't think about that. Yeah, people don't think about that. Mm -hmm. It's like a huge part of shaping them and that's where they know a lot of their best friends. Mm -hmm. I just kind of, uh, I'm not privy to that at all. Yeah. Yeah. So growing up, like, since you said, like, you were doing music from, like, day one, basically, who were your biggest musical influence? And, like, how do you think, like, they shaped your style? If I if I try to cross the whole spectrum, <laughs> I would say massive musical influence when I was, like, a little kid was, like, ODB. Mm -hmm. He was just always so silly, and I wanted mm -hmm. to be silly because I just was a spaz and kind of silly. <laughs> and then also, like, the Fresh Prince. Mm -hmm. Like, Will Smith as a rapper, like, when I was, like, in middle school, high school, I thought that was cool. I thought it was so cool. And <laughs> I loved it. And then by the time I'm in high school, I am really love, like, YG, mm -hmm. you know? I'm not necessarily – I wasn't necessarily all that gangster, you know? <laughs> but it was just – I don't know. It was very cool to me. And then – I think high school too, like Kid Cudi, Drake, Wiz Khalifa, Big Sean, that whole era had yeah. like a massive impact and showed me that you can be non, really not that gangster and become mm -hmm. very popping just by expressing yourself. Yeah, so absolutely. That was a huge influence. So you're going to be doing a live performance today for a bunch of WMU students and I know they're all very excited. What's your favorite <laughs> part about performing live? Favorite part about performing live is jokes telling jokes like <laughs> in between all the super lit mm -hmm. stuff i would say just having some sort of genuine moment where you're just talking and you're connecting like you're having a conversation with like two thousand people yeah. is very special because you don't really get to do that all the time yeah especially when you're like in a concert setting like it's hard to like really connect in a yeah, it's hard to connect. way and in, in, in until you start like just being yourself and in talking and you might stick something really funny and everybody laughs and it's mm -hmm. like that's a great thing yeah. and also i really love just hearing when i play a song that the crowd knows because mm -hmm. i have so much music that sometimes i play a song and they're like what is this song but when you play a song that they know 
there's no better feeling than that because yeah. you're singing it together. That's and awesome. That, yeah, it almost it's like some little creation you made mm -hmm. manifesting itself in real life and mm -hmm. talking back to you. It's mm -hmm. That's very rewarding. Awesome. What advice would you give to young artists trying to break into the music industry? Boom. All right. <laughs> Focus up, kids. Okay? This is, this is class. All right? We're at college. This is class. I'm going to keep it solid. This sounds very cliche. But when I say be yourself, don't turn this off. Don't turn it off. Okay? What I mean by be yourself is the music industry is oversaturated. It's a lot of people. It's crowded, right? And it's a lot of people doing the same sound. So you might have an artist that you love, right? And so how you learn how to get good at making music is by copying that artist. I understand it. But how you're going to become big is by being as unique as possible. Let's say your favorite artist is, you know, whoever, some person that's very popular right now. If you want to be the biggest trap artists right you have to become bigger and better than future at making trap songs which the likelihood of that happening is very small right it's very thin chance that for some reason you just become better at being future than future already is right so the easiest way to stand out is by being super unique and like your fingerprint will show you there's only one you ever and your life experiences are actually very detailed and very like there's not many people who have the same life as you so if you talk about all the actual unique details of what you like and this and that when i first started making songs like rapping about pokemon was not cool and it still ain't cool you know what i mean <laughs> like being cool is something totally different even mm -hmm. right now but other people weren't doing it so i just rapped about the things that were unique to what I actually liked. You know what I mean? Even if it's like, I like the beach. That turned into a whole aesthetic. And what you realize is when you do rap about honesty and like the things you actually like, even if it's so weird, like you like frogs, I don't know, you know? I don't know what you do in your free time. But the more you rap about your like actual, the details and you're honest about the things, even if they don't fit in the line of cool, you're going to stand out quicker. And then other kids are going to randomly be like, damn, you know, nobody knows this, but I like frogs too. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Other rappers are going to start talking about, yeah, I like Pokemon too. Because we, who doesn't like Pokemon? What are you talking about? We all like that. But we're just not rapping about it. And if you're trying, if you rap, if you try to follow the lines of what somebody else is doing, the only way you win is if you're better than them at that. And the likelihood of that is super small. Like you can be influenced by the future, but if you just rap and like future or you got to become better than him at that. And you're not going to do that because it's, it's him. So be yourself. All right. See, I had to explain the cliche of be yourself, but <laughs> that's what I mean by that. I think that's some great advice, especially for like those like young musicians that feel like, Oh, how am I going to like break through yeah. in this scene? So, um, so to wrap up our interview here, what can we expect from you in the coming months? Are there any new projects or collaborations that you can talk about? Yes. I got a new project, a brand new album that's getting ready to come out. It's called Level One. At least it was fun. And it's a series of projects I'm doing with uh, this producer, Steven Schaefer, who actually just turned 18. So it's a brand new sound for me oh, wow. because, you know, teenagers are on totally, totally different time. <laughs> Absolutely. They're on some totally different stuff. Yeah. And it's been very fun. Uh, I always like challenging myself and experience in uh, trying to do brand new sounds absolutely because you know, just at this point in my career rinse and repeating the stuff that just works is is getting tiring so i want to try and figure out if i can make some yeah else. some variability in the sound yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. I'm, and i might go country after that who knows oh wow i'm excited to hear that thank you for <laughs> coming to the interview today and i'm we're all looking forward to seeing your performance yes thank you thank, thank you, you for having me <laughs> yeah let's go broncos okay